Hello and welcome again to my under the sea bedroom. Uh, this is going to be the background in all my videos going forward, I think, because this is my bedroom. This is what I have chosen for myself. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about binding. So uh, if you're a transmasculine person who binds, you've probably heard the guidance that's been thrown around, which is don't bind for more than five days in a week and don't bind for more than eight hours in a given time. Well, this is reasonable advice and I think it's good, like, harm reduction. But this is not medically founded advice. There's not a sort of perfect rule that if you bind for only five days a week and eight hours at a time, you will not have any of the problems associated with binding, which can be things like breathing problems or back pain or rib pain, really a lot of things. And, and this can come from binding any given amount of time. There's sort of a reality that using a compression binder, like the ones that Underworks or GC2B sell, is a little bit dangerous. There are all sorts of things that you do in life that are not the best for you. Like, I don't know, I eat candy. Any amount of candy I eat is like, not great for me, but I do it sometimes. That's fine. And I bind sometimes with a conventional GC2B compression binder. It's not the best activity for me, but it's okay sometimes, and in moderation. All sorts of things in life are okay in moderation. Um, but this raises a sort of problem if you're someone who's trying to live 24-7 as male. What do you do during the time when you're not binding? Whether it's because you're following the five days a week, eight hours at a time guidance, which leaves a lot of hours during the day and two full days off, or whether it's because you're trying to do even less than that, what do you do? I mean, I, I certainly, like, in a variety of facets in my life, there are many people who don't know I'm transgender, and I don't want people to see my chest. So, what I'm going to talk about today are some low invasive or minimally invasive binding techniques that are not the same as the conventional GC2 but be underwork style binders that you see mostly um, in trans bases. Um, and these are, these are methods that have worked for me in cutting down the frequency with which I bind to now I, I probably wear a conventional binder once a week, maybe every, every other week, depending on an outfit. So if I want to, like right now I'm wearing a conventional binder because, I don't know, I was dressed up nice and I wanted to have a nice flat chest. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really bind anymore. I certainly feel like this has felt better in terms of having lower back pain, less of all the problems associated with binding, and I'm hoping also going forward that this might help um, with my top surgery results because it's also sort of known that if you bind routinely this can impact the um, the tissue in a way that might hurt your top surgery results. First of all, to give you guys some context, um, I'm going to show you guys what I look like in um, a conventional binder, then I'm going to show you guys essentially my chest as it is, don't be weird about it, <laughs> and then I'm going to show you guys in these alternate binding techniques. There's of course a reality that I am pretty small chested, and if you are less small chested these things won't work as well, but they'll work better than nothing, and there'll be times where, you know, the alternative is nothing because you should not be binding it's hurting you or you've exceeded like a, a reasonable amount of time so first i'll just show you guys uh my sort of normal gc2b binder um so i alternate between the half tank which is this cut um and the full tank which is the one that goes all the way down um and i this is actually the first binder i ever got so i got the nude but i probably would not recommend the nude because if it shows a little bit through your clothing it's not common that men wear undershirts that are nude toned, um, so even though this hides the color a little bit better, um, I think that like the white or black are, are just sort of more a normal color, and if someone sees a little bit of that, they probably will just think it's like an undershirt. Um, yeah, so this is this is what I look like in a conventional binder. Um, yep, so you can see, I mean, it gets me entirely flat, which is nice sometimes. Um, and yeah, uh, and I, I, you know, it doesn't feel outrageously tight or anything, but I certainly can tell after a day of wearing it that I've been wearing my binder for a day. Alright, so this is my chest. Um, yeah, so I'm obviously pretty small, but uh, you can certainly tell that I have a chest. Uh, and it's pretty obvious when I'm wearing clothing. Um, so I'll put on a white t-shirt so you can see for contacts compared with the other methods I use. Um, yeah, pre-testosterone I was probably like a 32B, and now I think I'm probably like a 32A. Um, I've definitely noticed some shrinking. Yeah. So like, I would never go out like this. This is like is, yeah, would make me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, and I'm I'm content showing you guys my audience because I know that almost all of you guys are trans or LGBT generally, but like, I would not want people seeing me like this in general, and um, even when I'm on my own, I, you know, am uncomfortable sort of being entirely uh, not having any binding like this. The, the biggest thing that I've discovered that I really love in terms of minimally invasive binding stuff is looking at compression shirts that are marketed towards cisgender men. These compression shirts end up being used for a medley of reasons. Sometimes it seems like, based on the Amazon reviews, guys really like working out in them, and then sometimes it's guys who have mild gynecomastia or slightly overweight. So gynecomastia is like where you have like moves, similar to us, I suppose. These compression shirts are, yeah, less intense than like the full-on binders. Um, they're made out of like a light stretchy material, so 
I really like um, Al Shreve has two different cuts, but there's um, there are these ones that are like a t-shirt style. So it looks kind of just like a normal t-shirt on camera, um, but the material here is like uh, it's 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 pretty stretchy, and I have to kind of like shove myself into it. But it's the same stretchiness all around, and it just sort of feels like a light hug. But the goal, if you're wearing um, if you are not going to be pushing your chest in, which is the thing that's kind of inherently invasive about conventional bindings. When you go like this, you're pushing tissue up into your ribs, you're, you're compressing like that. That's going to cause some level of problems. What you want to do if you're, if you're trying something minimally invasive is sort of just reshape the fat into more male patterns. So there are men who have chests. Um, there are men who have moves. If you look around, um, which I actually kind of recommend, um, and just look at guys in your hometown, you'll see plenty of guys who have some amount of chest. It's shaped a bit different than AFAB people's chests. Um, and so the goal should not be to make yourself flat, because making yourself flat is the thing that is a little bit costly, but the goal should be to kind of reshape it um, the, and kind of push around uh, the fat in a way that looks more masculine. So you certainly still have a chest, but just sort of like moves rather than boobs. And so that's what this kind of thing allows for. So this is, uh, this is the white one, so you can see, you can see my, my you know, because it, com it compresses up to my stomach, so I like to tuck it into my underwear. Um, but yeah, so like from the side now, I get like a significantly different kind of pattern. Like I certainly still have I'm not flat like I am with a binder. And you can see from the front that it's, I'm not flat, I certainly have some amount of a chest. But it's now sort of plausible that I'm just some sort of very out of shape cis guy, which is the goal. You want to look like a cis guy that's got a few extra pounds on him. And, and that's what this sort of thing can do, right? So it just sort of just distributes, instead of kind of concentrated like this, now it's sort of just a little like up against my body and just sort of, uh, yeah, pushed into a more male, uh, moob shape. And so then when I put a t-shirt on for this, certainly not entirely flat, but it's closer. And it's, and it's kind of in a shape that's like, yeah, that's like, oh, maybe these are packs, or maybe maybe I'm just sort of uh, out of shape. Um, and yeah, so typically I wouldn't wear a white t-shirt with this. I would wear this kind of thing with a with a bulkier t-shirt or a sweater underneath, um, or something just sort of to, you know, not be so. But but this is it feels way better. You can wear these like literally 24-7. I I feel like it's quite likely that it would be fine to even sleep in this. The other thing I like is that um, I think that you could probably get a tighter bind by wearing some really tight sports bras. I used to actually get back pain wearing sports bras, so I don't really know about that, and this does not give me any back pain, but I really like that this is marketed towards men. There's something kind of gender affirming about wearing a men's compression shirt, and so even if it doesn't get me entirely flat, I like that I'm mentally categorizing myself as one of many men that kind of has a little bit of extra flab. Yep, so this is one option, is the, um, is the, this kind of full t-shirt thing. So, this, again, this is the thing, so I'm quite small, but even if you are a bit larger, if you were just generally a larger guy, wearing this kind of thing could make it plausible that you are, uh, like a larger guy who has a chest because some larger guys have chests. All right, so this is the uh, this is the tank cut for a uh, compression kind of shirt where it's like a again a like a very light compression tank. I found this also on Amazon. It's not this one's a uh, Under Armour um, and this is by some I think random brand. I'll show you guys the material. It's got like I guess the camera isn't really focusing, um, but yeah, it's this sort of stretchy material and it goes. It's it's uniform kind of all the way through it, so it's not like with a GC2B tank that the binding is is really concentrated up on the chest area. This goes all the way down to the the, the gut. Um, and in the reviews in this section, you can see that a lot of the guys are wearing it, like uh, because they have a bit of a gut, um, or because they have gynecomastia, and this kind of serves all those purposes, which is like slightly rearranging the kind of contours of of your body um, rather than compressing inward. Um, so I think this tank cut is really nice. I also again I just think it looks. Like generally, this looks pretty masculine to me, which is nice. Um, so even if it's not like exceptionally compressive, I think the look of a black tank is great. So yeah, so this tank sort of feels like it feels like nothing. It just feels like a like a very very light um, kind of yeah. It's just it's just spandex kind of material. Um, but yeah, it it kind of just slightly moves my chest in a way that again I'm not I'm not entirely flat, but I think this looks more plausibly like pecs or or something, and again, black in particular means actually I'm actually having a hard time. <laughs> like, I think I look a little less flat in real life, but black in general is just kind of slimming color, so um, it looks maybe more compressive than it actually is. But yeah, so so it just slightly moves my moves the fat around in a way that looks more masculine. So then I will show you guys this with a white t-shirt. I would never wear a black tank with a white t-shirt because it's just kind of see-through. Uh, but just for the the context, yep. So you can. You know, you can see that 
I have, like, it's not entirely flat. You can see that I have a chest, um, but it's, it's more plausibly pecs or something like this. And then the other method that I use is taping. What do I know? So when you're getting binding advice, one of the first things people will tell you is not to use ace bandages. So that's a technique people used to use where they like would wrap a bandage all the way around um, like their chest and that had like broke ribs, very terrible because the ace bandage would shrink in um, and get more of a compression than what you started with. That's very bad. This is taping is not like that. It's not the same thing at all. So I use, I use trans tape. I think they're gonna have a Black Friday sale kind of eminently. They're always kind of randomly on sale. And I think generally they've been getting cheaper in the time that I've been buying trans tape. Other people bind using KT tape, which is a tape that you can use on, um, like it's the it's a tape that you use if you're an athlete and you've uh, got a muscle sprain or something like this. If you've seen tape on guys' legs, like it's that. I've tried KT tape. Trans tape is like unquestionably better and I strongly recommend tra trans tape over KT tape. The adhesive is just, um, is stronger and it lasts for longer and then it causes less skin irritation. So, trans tape is excellent and it's the epitome of this category of what I was saying of like low invasive binding techniques where there is no compression going on. Trans tape's goal is not to push your chest inward. It actually just can't do that. It's the goal is to rearrange the fat in a way that looks more masculine. Because there's literally zero compression happening, you, you wear it 24 seven, you wear it until it wears out. Um, and so I often, uh, if I have like an event coming up, I will tape right before the event because that's when the tape looks the best. And then like, I will remove it by day five through day seven, something like this. And by the later days, it, there's not like a whole lot of binding that's actually properly going on. Um, but it kind of just starts to peel off on its own. How do I bind using uh, trans tape? And there are lots of good videos for people of all sizes that you can look up. Um, again, because it, it, the goal is just to move the fat around. So if you're a larger guy, you can totally use trans tape. You won't get flat, but you will be able to get kind of a moob shape. Um, this is the, the medium size. So they come in like three different sizes, small, medium, and large of the, the, um, the width of it. I use either one or two pieces depending on my mood or or, or how, how good of a job I do on the first lay of the, um, the pieces. Um, the tape stretches a lot, so you actually need to cut less than what you think you need to cut. Sorry, I'm just removing this. The trans tape logo is on the, uh, on the roll, and I don't want that on my body. So you need to cut a smaller piece than what you think. I probably cut somewhere like, I don't know, five inches um, on each piece. I'll show you guys when I do it. Um, and then the other thing about trans tape, so, you know, it does come with a con, so it's it's so, it's so much like less invasive on your, your organs and your ribs and your back and all that. But I get skin irritation from it, and I think a lot of people get skin irritation from it. So what I mean is that you need to be really careful during the removal process. Um, okay, it looks like I'm just gonna have this little bit of thing where it says, uh, well now it says sta, but it was originally part of trans tape. Anyways, that's fine. Um, <laughs> So, um, you need to be really careful when you're removing it that you don't just like remove skin because it's super adhesive. So if you just like rip it off, like you might rip a bandaid off, uh, bad. Um, uh, and then you need to like put something on your nipples uh, so that you don't rip your nipples off, bad. Uh, and then I also find that I will get, um, I will get some sort of occasionally like maybe one in every five times I do it, I will get a little bit of blistering um, from it. So like, it, 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 it isn't the end of the world, it doesn't feel terrible to me, but it's just like, you know, I'll, I'll notice that like, towards the edge of the tape, there's like, a slight like, my skin has gotten raised a little bit, um, and there's a little bit of blistering. <laughs> That's not the best thing, uh, but I think it ends up being like, net worth it for me with trans tape, because of uh, how awesome the ability to, um, not bind is for me uh, with a conventional binder and then how awesome the ability is to go shirtless. So I personally, my, my housemates know that I'm trans, so I feel comfortable, I mean, because it's obvious that I'm trans when I'm taping, but I, my, my chest looks pretty masculine, so I feel comfortable going shirtless around them when I am taped and I, I when I go to the beach, I just tape in advance and go shirtless because it works in the water. So this is about the size that I cut. I don't know, is that five inches? So um, what I do, is you're again trying to try to push the pattern into a more masculine shape. So I put the I put the tape down like this, uh, starting at the top of my chest, and then I push it down towards the end. So I, you know, have kind of cupped the whole the whole hunk of my chest in the tape. Um, and then I grab like this, and I just I just so I like smooth it down so it stays put, and then I just pull it back. And then I just smooth it so that that way um, I find this minimizes a bit of the blistering, um, and then it also helps it stay in place. Um, 
Yep. So that's one side done. This is the side that I often, I actually have, one side is worse than the other. I had my top surgery consult recently, and the, uh, the surgeon was like, uh, one side is the ideal candidate for peri, and the other is not ideal, so this is the not ideal side. Um, so I'm more inclined often to do two pieces on this side. Um, so when I, when I put a second piece, I just go like this, and put it a little bit further so it's um, touching the skin over here, and put it right on top. And then I just pull it back, same, same deal. Right, so there we are, that's one side. Okay. And then the other side, I often only need one piece, so we'll see. Kind of jinxed it. Down. And then same deal as before. I just sort of pull it back. And then I smooth it. Okay, so this is the uh, final product. So my back, you'll see, I just kind of have the lots of back acne from tea, but also I sort of have the um, the tape kind of goes around a little bit. Um, but yeah, so from the side, eh, I mean, it like it, it gets me to a pretty masculine shape, I think. Um, on the other side, yeah, not perfect. You can definitely see there's like inevitably I get some of this like armpit stuff going on. I I feel quite comfortable when I'm uh, taped like this, and. It's really, really nice that you can just wear the tape 24-7. Like, I think that's a huge edge over conventional binding, because if you want to hook up with someone and you don't feel comfortable with them seeing your chest, you can sleep over and wear trans tape, and it's just a great option. So I'll show you guys what it looks like um, in a shirt. So it looks like this, and again, yeah, like, I'm not entirely flat, um, but, like, it certainly, I think, looks more masculine than untaped. Um, and, yeah, typically, again, I would never just... I don't just wear a white t-shirt as it is unless I'm going to wear like really a binder underneath. So I would wear like my old button down, like this kind of thing, like just placing it on top. And so if I wear one of these minimally invasive binding techniques, uh, and then this kind of thing, it works great. And yeah, I'm not as flat as I could be with a commercial binder, but in way, way less pain. Yeah, I would recommend looking at some compression shirts, trying out trans tape, and of course layering uh, for the days when you're taking off from wearing a conventional compression binder.